The dream of the quadruple was alive and kicking, and when it mattered most, a certain colossus rose to clinch the win. A cup final was always a challenge, regardless of the opponent's form or standing, and the challenge was magnified for the Reds, who were hit hard by injuries, leaving significant gaps in their lineup. To add to the challenge, Liverpool faced Luton Town in a league match just four days prior to the final, while the Blues benefited from a full week's rest and preparation. Despite fielding a squad weakened by absentees, Jurgen Klopp showcased his tactical brilliance, outmaneuvering Pochettino to secure his 10th final victory of Liverpool. It seems you can take the man out of Spurs, but not the Spurs out of the man, right? Well, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button, and let's dive into the story of Liverpool's victory. Never change a winning side. That's what Klopp did for the final lineup. But then, was there really an alternative? With 10 senior players sidelined by various injuries, Klopp was without the core that had been pivotal to his team's success this season. This situation compelled the German tactician to include six academy players among the substitutes and field two in the starting lineup. Kelleher was the goalkeeper of choice, stepping in for the absent Allison. The central defence saw Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahima Kanate pairing up, while Andy Robertson reclaimed his position at left back, and Connor Bradley held on to the right back role. The midfield was anchored by Wataro Endo at the number six position, flanked by Ryan Gravenberg and Alexis McAllister in the role of the two eights. The attacking trio, unchanged from the Luton match, featured Luis Diaz, Cody Gakpo, and Harvey Elliott leading the front line. Chelsea, buoyed by a strong showing at the Etihad, fielded their strongest lineup, seeking redemption for their 4 1 defeat at Anfield. The game unfolded and anticipated from both teams. With the ball, Liverpool aimed to exploit the gaps between the lines and wide off Chelsea's defensive third through direct passes from deep positions. Yet it was Liverpool's signature pressing and counter pressing that created the most notable opportunities, particularly in the first half. Liverpool maintained an average of 7.2 passes allowed per defensive action, orchestrating seven high turnovers. This was achieved in a 4-1-4-1 formation, strategically aimed at neutralising Chelsea's double pivot during their build-up play. You can see in this example how intense Liverpool's press was during the build-up phase, as McAllister made the jump to force an error from De Sarsi. Whenever Liverpool successfully forced a high turnover, it opened up spaces on the flanks for their forwards to exploit. Robertson and Bradley, seizing the moment, made well-timed runs into the areas to create numerical advantages. This strategic move enabled Liverpool players to engage in close-knit combinations deep within Chelsea's territory. This sequence resulted in Robertson whipping in a pinpoint cross to Cody Gagpo, who met it with a header that unfortunately struck the post. Liverpool's pressing game would not have been as impactful without Wataru Endo, who has proven to be a steal of the season. Watching him on the field alongside Caicedo, you'd be forgiven and thinking he was the one with a £100 million price tag. Endo ended the match with a 91% passing accuracy, serving as the midfield's rhythm setter and adeptly moving the play forward. He engaged in 21 duels, winning 12, essentially omnipresent, always finding himself in the optimal position at the right time. It seems Caicedo's decision to join Chelsea over Liverpool was a blessing in disguise for the Reds, doesn't it? And what's a Liverpool match without an injury scare? True, to form, Ryan Gravenberg had to be stretched off 28 minutes in, adding to Jurgen Klopp's injury woes. Gravenberg's exit brought Joe Gomez onto the pitch, with Conor Bradley pushing up to the right wing. Nonetheless, Liverpool's strategy of exploiting the gaps remained unchanged. In one notable play, Joe Gomez took the ball wide as Bradley charged forward, then abruptly halted to signal for the pass to enter space. With a light flick from Bradley, Liverpool were able to advance into dangerous areas, and with better decision-making, this particular situation would have resulted in a big chance for the Reds. Had Gakpo managed to feed the pass through to Diaz, the Colombian would have found himself with a clear path to the goal. Speaking of Luis Diaz, the number seven is truly undersung. Critics often highlighted his tendency to overhold the ball and consistently losing it. Fingers have also been pointed at him for missing too many chances. However, Diaz has risen to the occasion in the absence of key players like Darwin Nunes and Mohamed Salah, especially during the final, taking responsibility to be the leading figure in the front line. In contrast to Gakpo's quieter presence, Diaz was a dynamo on the field constantly pressing, seeking out passes, and being an ever-reliable option for his teammates. Engaging in 22 duels and winning half showcases the invaluable South American grit he brings to Klopp's squad. 
Now shifting focus to Chelsea, they too embraced that direct approach, aiming to leverage Nicholas Jackson and Raheem Sterling's speed against Liverpool's advanced defensive line. Their strategy bore fruit momentarily, with Sterling finding the net, only for the goal to be disallowed due to the margin offside decision against Jackson. The tactical shift in the second half, with Pochettino pulling Enzo Fernandez back, allowed Chelsea to carve out significant opportunities, reflecting in their 3.26 expected goals over Liverpool's 2.04. Yet their failure to convert any chances underscores the impact of another Liverpool player. A huge shout-out is due to Kelleher, whose nine saves, six from within the box, were critical. Beyond his save-making, Kelleher played a key role in Klopp's direct play strategy in both the Luton Town match and the EFL Cup final. Klopp himself was full of praise of Kelleher, saying that Liverpool have the best goalkeeper in the world in Allison and the second-best goalkeeper in the world in Kelleher. Before Chelsea began to grow further into the game, Liverpool themselves had a goal disallowed for offside. The call was made because Wataro Endo, positioned offside, was deemed to have interfered with play by obstructing Levi Colwell from tracking Van Dijk's movement. Klopp's visible frustration on the sidelines was palpable following the contentious decision. So what's your take? Was it right to disallow the goal? Post this turning point, Chelsea found their rhythm, putting Liverpool's defence under increasing pressure through their direct approach. With the Reds grappling with fitness issues, their game plan leaned heavily on launching long balls from the back. However, the absence of Trent Alexander-Arnold limited their ability to progress the ball from deep positions, and without Darwin Nunes, Liverpool missed a crucial target for those long passes. Here's where the plot thickens. By the end of the 90 minutes, Liverpool had introduced young talents Bobby Clark, James McConnell and Jaden Dance to the fray, with Jarrell Quansar joining them in extra time. This move underscored Klopp's trust in academy players. A team depleted with injuries, young players all around playing on the pitch and players struggling to keep up physically. Playing in the situation against Chelsea in the cup final, you'd expect Liverpool to park the bus and push for penalties, but the reality was quite the opposite. Even with a youthful lineup, the Reds continued to press and dominate through the extra periods. The resilience and aggression, even amidst a sea of young faces, can largely be attributed to one individual we've saved for last. Enter Virgil van Dijk the linchpin in Liverpool's consistent style of play despite numerous injuries. His presence on the field ensures the team never strays from Klopp's aggressive front-footed approach. Simply, there's no other centre-back who can orchestrate a high defensive line quite like Virgil van Dijk. Ending the game with a 91% passing accuracy, you'd think he'd been passing the ball sideways and backwards, but in reality, he's been the most progressive passer of the ball on the pitch. And if that wasn't enough, come for the hour, come for the match, Van Dijk rose to the occasion, delivering the decisive goal to clinch the trophy. Simply buying players doesn't ensure victory. This loss should teach Chelsea's board a valuable lesson about their transfer strategy. Meanwhile, this victory is more than just another trophy for Klopp and his squad. It's a strong message for the rest of the season. It highlights the incredible squad depth Liverpool possesses and it's a clear signal for the future, showcasing the talent coming through the academy in recent years. Now it's your turn. Who was your man of the match? Endo? Virgil? Did Elliot play a crucial role too? Do you think Liverpool can chase down the remaining three titles, keeping the dream of the quadruple alive until the end? Share your thoughts down there in the comment section below and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button for more deep dives in the future. Thank you and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.